Welcome, everybody, to Faith, Family, and Friends. Uh, we didn't have a broadcast last week. I'm Pastor Ralph with my wife, Amy. But tonight, we are so excited to have a good friend uh, from Virginia, whom we met uh, while we were serving as parents, uh, house parents at Patrick Henry Boys and Girls Home in Brookneal, Joel Harmon. It is good to have you aboard, brother. So good to see you. <laughs> see you. <laughs> Joel, uh, Joel was actually not in our house, although there were times we said, you know, we'll take that boy. Uh, no. <laughs> not, not that he was a perfectly behaved uh, young man, um, but we loved our boys. We loved our boys. And we, yeah. we, were, we were trying to exchange with, uh, you were with Elisa and Zach, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And I remember you loved NBA basketball and you never stopped loving NBA basketball, but you did like my Celtics. So, <laughs> and I think oh. it's when we had the big three, it was just after we lost the truth and uh, KG, I'm not sure the time frame, but uh, right. yeah. You were a Golden State uh, Warrior or Laker fan? LeBron fan. How can I forget? Yeah, <laughs> I'll give you a hard time over that. So Joel, where have you been keeping yourself? This was 2000, uh, 2017, 2018. When we were down there in the neck of uh, your, your neck of woods, of the woods, and and uh, do you still live in Virginia? Yeah. Yes, I live in Alta Vista now. Um, Vista, yeah. Where, where I was at before I got sent to the group home. Yeah. And I've been here for about a couple months. Couple months. Uh -huh. So walk us through the journey of how uh, of your faith of what really captured my interest in having you on the show is not just our mutual connection back there, but you started preaching on Facebook. And I'm like, man, Jesus is in this guy, Joel. And you were getting me fired up, brother. And I'm like, wow, you were diamond in the rough. And I still believe that about you. This is about a year ago. But we would hear you. We would see you exhort people, just a couple, three-minute devotion. And your love for Jesus was so palpable. And it's not like it wasn't before, but I just felt, I, I, I sensed a growth in you. So if you would give our audience kind of a, however you feel like how much you want to share that, you know, a broken upbringing, life, I mean, family, and found yourself as, as part of Patrick Henry, Boys and Girls Home, and how the Lord used uh, Elisa and, and Zach and the folks there, Patrick Henry, and other people in your life to bring you to where you are now and how Jesus is, is in your life now. Well, and when I was at Patch Henry, I knew God. i have been in church and everything, but I didn't always completely understand everything. And uh -huh. It's when I first got into Patch Henry. I only been there about a month. And I was just going through it. I was being, I was depressed all the time. I was always sad, sad. I missed my home. Uh -huh. And I tried to myself and I got sent to a hospital and I was there for about a month mm. and I hadn't prayed in years the last time I had prayed when I was probably a child because I wanted mm -hmm. to talk to my but I prayed one night asking God to help me because I got sent to the hospital the hospital was four hours away from anybody any of my family anybody and I only had one pair of clothes mm -hmm. and I, I couldn't take it it was it was bad mm. having to wear this thing over and over and I I was just very embarrassed. But I, I prayed one night. I asked God if he could help me. And the next day this nurse, I had never talked to the nurse. I didn't even know who she was. She came up to me and she she said, I felt like you needed these and she handed me a big like bag of clothes. Mm. Praise God. <laughs> like I was in tears. And then this other guy, he came there for just a day. I still remember his name. His name was Matthew. And he said, God bless you, brother. Here's my shoes. Take these. Wow. And I was like, man, I don't, I don't know what's out of, I don't deserve none of this. I don't, I mean, I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. And I, I came home and gave my life to Christ. And I was doing good for a while uh -huh. with my faith, Elisa, and 
Zach helped me a lot. They really strengthened me and taught me a lot of things that I didn't know. And I'd always ask questions mm -hmm. about stuff I didn't understand. Like, one thing always interested me was revelation. I was always yeah. curious about the In future. Times. Yeah. Yeah. And it helped being at Patrick Henry helped me a lot because before I got sent there, I was I've I was young, but I got into drugs at a young age because mm -hmm. I was trying to deal with the sadness and the trauma I dealt with as a kid. Okay. Mm -hmm. But being there helped me a lot because I, I didn't have to worry about that and I could go just give all my problems, all my worries, anything to God because he can away any sadness, any addictions, any thing that we struggle with. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that really helped is being surrounded by not just kids that believe in Christ, but also adults as well right. that are more whereas I am. Mm -hmm. Be good role models, right? What you needed, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah. I really had many Christian role models. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Role. Yeah. So well, you, you did you graduate out of the program or graduate from high school and what happened after after your your um being down at Patrick Henry boys and girls like that? I got out when I was 18, you know, I went to Appomattox and graduated from there. Okay. And it took me a while before I got a job, but then I got a job. But then I I started to slip up. I slipped up again. I kind of got back into my old habits, mm -hmm. old problems that I dealt with, the addiction. But I even got back into drugs again. Mm -hmm. And what happens last year um something changed that really changed my entire life mm. i was working at walmart i was missing work all the time i was being lazy i was not trying because mm -hmm. I, again i had gotten back into my addictions and then I had gotten back into being depressed all the time. And I was worrying about family issues and a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I got fired from Walmart, which made things a lot harder. Yeah. And I was walking home, contemplating my life, thinking about suicide again. And then I got home. I just, I felt like I had the longest prayer of my life. I was like, I just need your help. I need your help. And I texted an old friend of mine I hadn't talked to in years. And she invited me to church. <laughs> I was like, man, I kind of ain't been to church in so long. I don't know. I And, like, I haven't sent, saw this person in a while. And it was a church I've never been to. But I was like, you know what? It doesn't matter. Right. It's church. It doesn't right. matter. It's come as you are. It doesn't matter if you don't know anybody. It doesn't matter anything. Church is like a hospital for all the sick. That's right. Preacher. It can sick physically, emotionally. You got, Jesus can cure anything. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And went to church. And it was honestly, the service spoke to me a lot because it had been the pastor had talked about a lot of things that I was dealing with anyway. Problems with addictions, problems with sadness, depression, mm -hmm. the things that are attacks. Like what this says, Ephesians 6, there are many attacks. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. From the devil and from demons and everything. There's always a spiritual warfare going on, and we had to learn how to fight it, how to... Mm -hmm ourselves against it and to help to help other people against it yes. because yeah it's a thing it's going on at all times all times yeah, yeah. and it's, it's not just people think it's just our minds but it's also the things we look at like just mm -hmm. watching for instance can 
be an attack in some way can trigger a person in some way or mm -hmm. hurts way. So we had to we had to stay strong. We had to follow what God tells us to do at all times. Cause Amen. that's what I learned. I kept trying to do my way. I kept and I realized the more you try to do it your way, the more it's not gonna work. But if yeah. you do it God's way, it will always succeed. Amen. So true. Wow. And so your life really changed that night at church. And yes, you came back to God. Wow. Changed me completely because there was a lot. Like, uh, when, since I got in the group, I'm always wanted to also do the same thing y'all did. That's mm -hmm. like talk to people, kids or people close to my age and tell them about Jesus, tell them about Christ. And I realized that's one thing I really feel like God has called me to do is to go out and reach the youth, go out and mm. tell the youth about Christ. Because I, honestly, I believe the more youth that know about Jesus, the better. Amen. That's so it's true. Grow up in it. Yes. Then right later on, because we never know when Jesus yeah. could, come, could come home right now. That's right. Yeah. You have to That's tell right. everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Amen. So did you stay in touch with that individual and you um still friends and encouraging each other and going to that church or has God led you elsewhere? Well, we we keep in contact, but honestly, like I said, there's a lot of attacks and honestly that's one thing that's kind of been it's been kind of a divide because there's been a lot of attacks and honestly a Part of it has been my own fault because I have, like I said, I've sometimes slipped up. But now I've realized it's okay to slip up. It's okay to mess up. It's okay to sin. But what we have to do is focus on God and try our 100% best not to do the mm -hmm. things that we have to completely die to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Live as Joe Harmon or Mr. Athlete, yeah. but to Christ, not be perfect, but still love and you know do the right thing in life. Amen. Amen. It sounds like when as you're sharing, the Lord is is kind of maybe putting you on a new trajectory where maybe there's the failures, but they're fewer and far between. And you're growing deeper in the Lord, and and hopefully someday you'll be able to put some of those more difficult issues behind you, and they'll be in the rearview mirror, and you'll be able to have victory so you can help other people who maybe struggle with with the suicide same, and, and the drugs and so forth, and that's awesome. What, what would you say to anybody who's watching this broadcast tonight who? Maybe Amy and I can't relate. Mrs. Ackley and I can't relate to some of what you shared tonight. But it doesn't matter because we're all one in Jesus. We all got our issues. But maybe some people who watch it tonight who struggle yeah. with suicide and drug addiction, what would you say to them to encourage them? They're never alone. Amen. Even in the times that you may feel like you're alone, that you feel like. There's nobody there. God's mm -hmm. always there. Yeah. All you have to do is close your eyes talk to him. And yeah. that's the thing I've realized as, as Christians that some Christians have done, we we categorize things and we judge things when we shouldn't do that. But mm -hmm. there's like no certain way that we have to pray. Prayer is just talking to God, just closing yeah. your eyes and talking to our, our right. creator. Yeah. And just Anytime anybody's feeling an urge or sadness or anything mental that they say, you know, bipolar or anything, mm -hmm. anytime you know there's something, just talk to God because he can literally take anything away and he can help you with anything. Yes. I like what anything. you said, Joel, about you, you started saying about it doesn't matter because we tend to judge certain behaviors and sins as worse than others and Jesus all... doesn't do that i mean does he 
I mean, I was reading about the woman caught in adultery this morning. And, you know, it's like, you know, Jesus, he put it right there. He said, you, if any of you don't have any sin, then you could stay, throw that first stone. But one by one, they walked out. Uh, so the only one that was left was Jesus and her. And he said, go and sin no more. So it doesn't matter what we've done. Um, and I think people feel like, boy, God could never forgive me of this. Uh, and so when, when you share your story, again, it, it reaches somebody maybe that I can't reach who might tonight be struggling with, you know, the thought about taking their life and ending it all or, you know, hitting it up on another drug. So um, you feel like your life is an example of, of hope for other people? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hope is through Christ. Like, this is my favorite bro. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through the Spirit with me. That means thing in your life. If you give to Christ, you can do it. Yeah. You can beat drug addiction. You yeah. can beat that mental illness. You can beat that sickness. You can beat anything. Just look to God. Just mm -hmm. give him all your worries, all your concerns, everything in life. Just give it your all. That's why it says to do everything as it is glorifying God. Even to the point of eating and drinking, mm -hmm. we're supposed to glorify God all things. Amen. Amen. Well, can you pray for those people who are struggling tonight that God would make a difference in their heart? Maybe they'd even come to Christ. Then I'm going to pray for you, brother. And uh, and then we'll try to reconnect sometime. Do this again. Go ahead. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for anybody and everybody that watches this, Lord. I just ask you if anybody is struggling with anything in their mind or an addiction or anything that's just been dragging them down, Lord, I just ask you to help them learn and help them grow closer to you where they'll be able to be set free from each and everything they're dealing with. Because through you, Christ, all things are possible and anything is possible. Because, God, you do all things. You perform miracles every day. You do everything for the ones that you love. You loved us so much that you died on the cross, and you will love us so much that you can save us from anything. All we have to do is talk to you and ask you and have a deep and intimate relationship with you. We thank you, Jesus Christ, for everything that you do. Even in the times we have struggled for, even in the times we have battles, you always help us to know everything because, like it says, even if there is a storm, there's always a rainbow at the end. There's always a sun shining. God can take you out of the dark places in your life. You may be in the valley, but God can take you up to the mountain. Amen. He can strengthen anybody, do anything for anybody. And I just thank you, Lord, for always just helping us when we need it the most. We love you, Jesus Christ, and we thank you for dying on the cross that we can live for you. In Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, I pray for Joel, Amy, and I just agree together that you continue to walk with him and all the good that you have done in his life from dying on the cross for him to putting uh, key people in his life. Uh, I pray for him, Lord, that, that growth in you and that depth that, that he's begun to experience would continue and uh, deepen, uh, Lord, that you would call him to ministry, show him uh, what that means, because I believe he has a calling of God in his life. And I believe the word of God is like it was with Jeremiah, that it burns within him and he can't withhold. That's like a fire in his bones. I pray that you would just continue to stoke that fire. And Lord, let him feed off you and the people of God and the things that would help him grow. Thank you so much for our reconnection. Help it not to end here. And again, for those that he has prayed for tonight, anybody that's listening, and watching the show tonight, who needs deliverance from drugs or to find Jesus to heal those wounds that would cause them to consider taking their life. I pray that you would, as with Joel in his life, that you would intervene in that person's life, Father, tonight and perform a miracle. We thank you, Father, for it ahead of time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Hey, listen, Joel, I want to recommend to you um, you got your, your mute off again. I don't know if you want to say any more, but um, and others who are watching, I don't usually plug a book, 
unless I'm talking to the author. But you would love this book. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called The Bondage Breaker by Neil Anderson. It's a classic. And it will help you. It's helping me again. I read it years ago. It's 30 years old. We're reading it in men's group. I've lost him. I lost Joel. <laughs> um, if, I, if I don't get him back, folks, I hope you enjoyed that interview. We will re-post uh, it because I know some. There, there he is. There he is. You get back. I don't there know. It, it did that twice now. Did it? <laughs> well, we're going to finish. But I want, I want, if, if you don't have the funds for this, bro, you need to tell me if you do not. Amy and I will get you a copy of this. Uh, and we'll encourage you. We're doing it with men's group. Because when you mentioned Ephesians, and this, this, it is a spiritual battle, what we go through. And we'll send a copy. I've got an extra copy with a workbook. We're going to send it to you. But thank you for sharing your testimony tonight, bro. And let's thank stay you. in touch. And go Celtics, right? <laughs> <laughs> we love you. No, go Lakers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me too. We love you, Joe. Let's stay in touch, brother. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'll send you a copy of this later. God bless. God bless y'all.